Hello everyone, you are watching the Chrissy B Show. So what do we have in store for you today? We've got lots as usual, including a fitness tip by Jane Rafter. We also have back on with us, Dr. Rob Hicks, who's going to be telling us how to deal with fussy eaters. Now, whether that be a child or an adult, what can you do to solve a situation in your own home? We also have styling by Cynthia Gregoire, and also we have makeup tips with Megan Gregoire. They are um, sisters, of course, and we'll have them back with us as well. They did a fabulous job last time, so we just had to invite them back. We have lots of other things too, but first of all, let's go to Jane's fitness tip. Jane and this is Elia and welcome to our fitness tips for the week. So what we thought we'd talk about this time is um, getting fit for either for free or on a tight budget because not everyone's got the money um, to join up expensive gyms so we thought we'd share with you our ideas because there are, are lots and lots of things you can do for free or for very little money and this is something that I always say um, and I know it sounds obvious, but I always say to people, look, if you're really unfit, start by walking. Get yourself some trainers and start walking every day. Start with 10 minutes, build it up to 15 minutes, and just walk. This is the best sort of exercise yeah. you can get, isn't it? I think um, initially that is, that's all you need to do to start yeah. with. Walking, build, like you said, build the time up. Yeah. You know, going to the parks, that's for free. You can do that and just yeah. kind of like, just slowly build, build up time on your walking or yeah. running. And you can progress it to running, can't yeah. you? Yeah, even if it's 20 seconds of light jogging followed by 30 seconds of walking, you know, you really, really build up your fitness and your stamina that way. Okay. And you know, there's lots of other things you can do too. You can, if, if you have a look around, there are free things and very cheap things in, in most people's local areas. Yeah. You know, if you, if you were to look into Google um, and put in free fitness classes, I mean, for example, I know at our local Sweaty Betty fitness shop, they run um, some free fitness classes and, yeah. I, and you know of running yeah. clubs and things. There's running there. clubs and also there's a um, Nike training club where they um, hold classes in the retail store, which are for free as yeah. well. Yeah. So it, there's, there's, plenty there's plenty around and there's fitness DVDs as well. Yeah, you've uh, made some fitness DVDs in fact, haven't made, you? I've made a few celebrity fitness DVDs and, and they're on, you know, they're on, online for five, seven pounds and, yeah. and it gives you like a 90 minute workout, which is, yeah. and it's toning and yeah. it's cardio based workouts as well. I think well. the only thing with the DVDs is you've got to be sure of your technique and that you're doing it safely. So if you're not sure, you could maybe get one session with a personal trainer who'll just come along and make sure that you're doing things sure. right. That's the yeah. only thing with those. But other than that, yeah. you can get a really good workout. You can do it when you want, can't Definitely, you? There's yeah. no, no time deadlines yeah. on that or anything. You're not working with anyone around you, so you're just a bit more private in your own home if you yeah. feel you need that as well. So It's really handy, yeah. isn't it? So I think basically what we're saying is don't wait till the day that you join a gym, okay? Your fitness journey can start today. All you need to do is put your trainers on and go for a walk and you'll be fitter than you were before you did that. So get going, everyone get, get into something, whether it's walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, just get out there and get fit and enjoy yourself. Thank you very much, Jane and Aaliyah. And that goes to prove that there's no excuse for not keeping fit because you can get it for free too. So now let's revisit one of my favorite challenges. It was something that I found very, very hard, but it was also very enjoyable. Let's take a look. Hello everyone and today I'm here with Wayne who's the race director for the Nuts Challenge. Now Wayne, tell us what is the Nuts Challenge first of all? Yeah Chris, it's a um, 7K, 14K, 21K, 28K <laughs> assault course. You're going to be doing the uh, middle section which mm. is probably about 1K. And you have a lot of charities coming here as well, don't you? Absolutely. I think we had 60 charities last March and wow. we managed to raise over £100,000 for various charities for that uh, event. Okay, now as you see guys, I didn't bother putting on makeup because I'm going to get very messy. So, you know, I thought, what's the, what's the point of wasting the makeup, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I don't need it, do but I? I think some of the girls that uh, are doing this with you are going to have a bit of a shock when it comes to makeup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tell us about the girls that are coming to. Uh, yeah, they're the crystals that uh, are cheerleaders for the Crystal Palace, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing this to raise money for charity. Okay, All right, so I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm not really sure exactly what to expect, how I'm going to do, but hopefully I'll finish in reasonable time. I think you will. I think uh, 45 minutes is good. <laughs> um, 
under that 30 minutes is really good, but yeah. uh, 20 minutes is exceptional. Let's see how you get on. Okay, let's try the 45. <laughs> let's do the 45, shall we? Give it a try, right. at least. Yeah, definitely. Good. Just think ahead, focus on the end. Don't think about what's happening to you in real time, okay? It's about the end of those, okay? <laughs> All right, so we're just about to start the challenge now, and I really hope I do well. Especially Abby, she's really, she's really helping me out, bless her. Where is she? ladies here. You are? Hi, I'm Lulu. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Kate. Hi, I'm Tilly. And we are the cheerleaders. Right, so what are you actually raising money for? You're not just here for fun, are you? No. Today? No, we're all raising money for different charities. I'm raising money for Click Sergeant and I've raised £325. Well done. Uh, both of us were sisters and we've raised uh, £1,750, I think. Yeah, had to research. Great. 
I've raised about £350 and it's for the round uh, table children's wish in Bournemouth. And would you recommend doing something like this for everyone that wants to raise charity? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's so amazing. So fun, yeah. But it's challenging as well. Yeah. 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 It actually went faster than what I thought it would. I yeah. think because yeah. originally I was meant to do this on my own, but I joined that, I kind of, they crashed their thing here. And I was, they were really encouraging, actually. It's been really nice to do as a group, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's team really building. Team yeah. building. Yeah. 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 So yeah. thanks a lot, girls. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Fun raising. Well, guys, I've completed the challenge in quite a good time. Um, it was tiring, but I really, really enjoyed it. And it's amazing what you can do when you actually put your mind to it. I did feel a bit nervous before, but I was told that's quite a good thing to feel a bit nervous because it makes you more aware of your surroundings. So that's really good. I'm also proud of myself because I'm almost twice the age of some of the people that were doing it today. So I kept up and I did it and I've passed the challenge. So woohoo! I really want to go back and do that again and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them if I can do it again because it was really good fun and I'm thinking of taking a few people with me this time that have been laughing at me in the studio <laughs> she's hiding behind the camera okay so we're gonna go to a quick break now and we'll be speaking to Rob Hicks all about fussy eaters what do you do when people in your house are really fussy with what they eat they won't eat certain things they don't eat the stuff that's good for them what can you do about it and I'm not just talking about children I'm talking about the adults as well so do join us after this Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and now it's time to talk about Fussy Eaters with Dr. Rob Hicks. Hello. Hi. hi. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Were you a fussy eater? Kind of, yes, I was actually when I was younger. I wouldn't eat my veg and I hated salads and I used to kind of get a bit force fed <laughs> by my father who wouldn't let me leave the dinner table until I finished my salad, even if I was there for ages. But now I love vegetables and I love everything. Yeah. yeah so it's, it, it's what you, you know, being a fussy eater is essentially normal mm -hmm. for, for many children. One in three toddlers will be termed fussy eaters. Oh, it's quite common then, wow. Yeah, yeah, Very so common. I mean, I think it's, it's reassuring for parents to know <laughs> that actually they're not the only one. Their mm. child isn't the only child, you know, turning meal times into a, a conflict zone, as we hear yeah. parents say. They say, you know, it's like, it's like going into battle every time, you know, whether it's Must breakfast. Really lunch. It is yeah. very stressful. If you think of um, all the surveys report the same things, that, you know, parents feel stressed, mm -hmm. anxious, some actually become depressed because of the whole you know, battle and the challenge of trying to get the children to eat. And of course, the, the thing that worries them most is, is the child, is their child getting enough nutrients? Mm. And the reassuring mm. thing is what we say to parents is, look, if your child is happy and they're growing and gaining weight yeah. and they're not ill, then it's they'll, be, okay. they'll be getting it, it's okay. <laughs> so how do we then deal with the, the fight Mm -hmm. That's the, you know that 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 parents are faced with. That's you know we can reassure them that the kids are okay. And they yeah. have to deal with the problem. Because that, that that's already got. a big weight off their shoulders. Yes. And to actually know, yeah. look, first of all, that is quite common, very common actually, mm. not quite common, very common. And also that they you know it doesn't mean that their child's anything wrong with their child no. necessarily if they they're still okay. And actually, what many parents say is they say, well, what am I doing wrong? And we can reassure them, say, you're not actually doing anything wrong because mm -hmm. it's a normal phase for most toddlers. Yeah. And why it happens is because once they get the past the age of 12 months, their, their growth rate slows down, so their appetite is less for starters, oh, okay. but also they're trying to exert their independence. And, and that's good. Already. <laughs> that's part of development. So when yeah. they get to the toddler stage, you know, they're around about two years old, 18 mm -hmm. months, two years old, they're actually trying to test you and test themselves. The other thing, of mm -hmm. course, is that they're often preoccupied with the other things. They've learned how to do blocks or they've learned how to turn pages in a book. So mm -hmm. they're not bothered about eating. They want to do these things. But they will instead. generally ask for food anyway once they get really hungry. Yes, right, and that's well. one of the tips, you know, try and pick out the time when the child is, is you know they're going to be hungry, you know, right. because that will certainly mean that they're more likely to want to eat rather than, you know, we've all seen it, haven't we? The pushing away or the, uh, <laughs> no, you 
know, and, the, and then the throwing of the food or the spoon goes on the floor. Mm. Um, and that's one of the things you speak to parents, what are you worried about? They say, oh, the mess. Well, so actually, you know, the reality is, <laughs> you know, ki kids, you know, get messy. And, what, and yeah. one, of the, one of the things that they can do is let the f children feel the food. You know, let them handle it, explore it, feel the textures, you know, f feel whether it's hard or mushy, mm. you know, look at the colours, um, because that's a very good way of helping a child overcome any sort of fear or reluctance they have. That is such a good idea. Yeah. It's if a you, good point, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, you've got to be able to put up with the fact yeah, that you do. they, you they just get just it all over them. Yeah, you just lay out lots of newspaper on your kitchen yeah. floor, dining room floor, and just let them have Or you get one of those pla <laughs> you know, plastic mats that you yeah. know, sits under, under the chairs yeah, so that the food true. is there, they're wiped clean. Uh, so that doesn't encourage them time. to actually yeah. try it and, yeah. okay. What, and else you could, you just, what yeah. else would I say? I know, as well as feeding them, let them feed you. So they get used oh, to holding so their food, you know, and yeah. so, and the other thing, of course, is, is many children, it takes, it can take 17 attempts for a child to, to accept a food. So be patient, try and remain calm, persevere, and also a mealtime, if you're introducing a new food, introduce it with lots of your child's favourite foods that you know they're going to mm. like, and then maybe just offer them one mouthful at that meal of the new food, and then move on and then come back to that new food right. the, the next day. Routine's very good. Get them to sit in the same place at the dinner, at the, you know, the meal table, mm -hmm. eat at the same time. Um, it's important not to offer too many choices, if choices <laughs> at all, because otherwise you just spend your life <laughs> creating a menu every day. Um, and remain calm you know, is, is the key thing. Mm -hmm. um, and if nothing else, you know, just laugh. Just laugh, <laughs> <laughs> don't get stressed. Now I remember actually watching, I think it was a, a TV program where a mother was really concerned because all her child would eat, and I think her child was about two years old, all, that, all he wanted was chips, yeah. and that is all he would eat. Yeah. And she was so stressed out about it. Like you said, you know, she thought she was a bad mum. What yeah. could she do? And then the, whoever was advising said, look, at least he's eating something. Yes, and yeah. even though it's chips, it's got some kind of nutrients in it that, that will help sustain him for now, not to worry too much, not to get so... Stress. I mean, one of the things you can do with, with, with chips is you can make foods into chip shapes. Uh -huh. So you might have strips of carrot, you might you know, cut the broccoli so that actually it looks... So they're all sort of the same shape. Yeah. So they get used to... Because sometimes it's actually the shape that they like and they don't like the, the, the shape of, let's say, you know, a tomato or something because mm -hmm. they're just not used, you know, used to it. So you can do that. Yeah. You can also make sure that you make them into faces on the mm -hmm. plate, make them into shapes on the plate. So you might make them into a car or an aeroplane um, and get the child actually involved in the choosing of the food, the preparing of the food, the sort of, all the sort of laying out. So it, it, it's part it's of what they're making. Well. It's not that they're sitting there thinking, I'm gonna be forced to eat this and it all gets into a, you know, a two way battle. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of ways, you know, to get around this. And the reassuring thing for <laughs> is that children grow out of it. They do. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you just got to look after yourself <clears throat> during that time. Yeah. Rob, we've actually got a video. Um, we did a recording at uh, the kids' cookery school. And these kids basically, it's a charity that runs it actually, and they basically go and they learn how to cook and they're very hands-on. We'll take a look at it because it's really sweet the way they get really get into it and they just love actually the whole experience of, of cooking. So let's take a look at this. What I enjoy about teaching kids is um, they're very enthusiastic, they're very open-minded, they're, they're willing to try new things, um, and they're like sponges at this age, and they really absorb a lot of information. What's the difference, do you think, between a batter and a dough? A batter is runny and a dough is solid. Excellent, good girl. Okay, so the consistency, okay, how wet it is will be very different. The Kids Cookery School was started because my eldest son went off to primary school and I learnt that he wasn't going to learn to cook, and I didn't want that. And what do you promote at this school? Oh, we promote healthy eating, particularly uh, foods low in fat, sugar and salt. Everything is fresh, everything's made from scratch. And it, it used to be home economics, but it doesn't exist anymore.
cooking is a life skill. Um, every child, um, even as young as three years old, should learn about cooking, about the skill, why it matters. We need to eat fresh food, we need to keep fit for life, and the only way to keep fit for life is to learn to cook. I, th I think the, the hygiene is, is incredibly important. It's, it's always a, uh, the grounding and where we start the sessions. Um, from that, it's, it's about having fun, it's about enjoying it, not eating fruits and vegetables just because you're told to, but because they're tasty and they're, and they're delicious. Why do you enjoy coming to the kids' cookery school? Because I, because I, because I love cooking. What is your favourite dish? Pizza. The pumpkin. <laughs> Cause it's cause it smells so good. <laughs> um, the fingers. Is it because you like decorating it? And do you help your mom to cook at home as well? Yes. Why do you think cooking is important? Because um, if you didn't know how to cook, you can you can't cook things to eat. So if they were raw, you you might not be able to cook them. What is it about the kids' cookery school that they enjoy? Oh, everything. They like just learning about healthy eating. And talk to me about it in the supermarket. We're trying to get them off the junk food, off fast food, off snacks, all of the foods which are too readily available. It's a good, good age to try and get kids involved in cooking because, um, as you can see, they've used lots of lovely colourful uh, fruits and vegetables, which is obviously clearly better for them uh, in their diet. And they're more likely to eat it if they've had a hand in cooking as well. There you go. So like we just heard, they're more likely to eat it if they've if they've helped with it, which I is great. I could put it better myself. Yeah, it's that spot on. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk now a little bit about adults just before we go to the break, because there are adults that are really fussy with their food as well. There are, and many, many you know, we say that most you know, fussy eaters grow out of it. There are some there are some people who, who for whatever reason, they won't eat tomatoes. They won't eat cabbage. You know, yeah. My best friend from school, you know, he, he he wouldn't eat tomatoes. He wouldn't eat lettuce. You know, he wouldn't eat any sort of salad. <laughs> um, he you know he didn't like the taste. I mean, I think on. You know what we have to keep an eye out certainly with teenagers is mm -hmm. that they're not developing eating disorders and they're you right. know so it's not that they're you know they're, they're being fussy because actually they're trying to lose weight or because they've got a mental health problem mm. then you know and a lot of people are termed fussy eaters when actually they're trying to diet um or, or and, and they may not need to yeah. so so those things are important what to about though if, if these adults are also influencing the the kids in the house. Well, like that's to, very true. I mean, yeah. you know, if mum or dad won't eat broccoli, then it's very difficult then <laughs> to get the children to eat broccoli. At least pretend it? to eat it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I there's you, ways of doing it. You've got to set the example. Yeah. You know, as parents, we have to set the example. So, you know, if you want your child to eat tomatoes or you want them to eat carrots, then you've got jolly well got to eat them yeah, yourself. True. Or find an alternative, you know, vegetable or, or fruit or whatever food, protein food that you mm. do like that then that the, your child can have as well. But you know what's fascinating? The time when many children actually become fussy eaters outside of the toddlers is when they go to school. Oh. You know, when they start having meals in school and their friend says, oh, I'm not eating that cabbage. Oh, and then they start. And then they <laughs> come home and they won't eat cabbage and they may have eaten cabbage for years. But peer pressure already as soon peer as they, pressure. they go to yeah. school. Yeah. Now you didn't tell us, Rob, were you a fussy eater? Um, the only thing, I'm not, I love to eat, as you can probably tell. <laughs> you probably tell. Um, the only thing that I, d I don't eat um, is eggs and it's, it's a shame. Really? Because I, I just simply don't like the taste of them, and it's oh, just a gosh. shame because they're they're Protein. so versatile. They're, you know, <laughs> there are so many things you can yeah. do with them. Um, but that's the only thing. Otherwise, oh. you know, I'll eat most. Well, things. if that's the only thing, it's not too bad. Yeah. Rob, thank you so much. It's thank been a you. pleasure as always, and thank great you. advice as yeah. usual. And hopefully, we'll see you again soon. I hope cover so. another interesting topic soon, aren't we? I think we are. We are. Yeah. We'll let you in on that secret very soon <laughs> okay so after the break i'm going to be joined by the gregoire sisters uh, megan's going to be talking about makeup and cynthia's going to be talking about styling so do join us after this don't forget to subscribe to the chrissy b show always aiming to show you the happier side of life you can find us on youtube facebook and twitter Welcome back. Now I'm with the lovely Gregoire sisters, Megan and Cynthia. 
Hello girls. Hello. It's lovely to have you back. Yes, now we're going to start off with the makeup first and then after the break we're going to continue with the styling. So we're going to get the best of both worlds today. So what were you going to do today, Megan? Well today, Chrissy, I am going to let you know what's in the spring-summer makeup forecast. Okay. So what I'm seeing is lots of great skin, fabulous three-dimensional layering of textures and basically a pop of color. And I'm going to show your viewers how to do that for maybe those who may be a bit apprehensive mm -hmm. of color, um, may fear it's too much or it doesn't suit them. So how, how we get away with color without, um, well, what did they say? It's like the emperor's clothes. Um, they're, what is it? they're not really there or they're there. <laughs> if you look. I can't remember. What's <laughs> something, something like Cynthia, that. Cynthia, I can't remember. Here. <laughs> The Empress, we were talking it about this It looks like thing. you're wearing nothing, but there's actually something there. Right, right, right. right, right. Half right. of my face is done. So half of Cynthia's face is done, and I'm just going to show you. We used a mineralized um, base foundation, which has got that very healthy glow look to it. Chrissy, mm -hmm. you as well. You just look yes, vibrant. Yes, did my, my today. makeup earlier. And um, so I've done half of her face, but I just want to show um, the finish of this because it is quite um, dewy and when you do have um, this look Chrissy you want to kind of stem away from the powder you don't want to cake that on okay. and so if you have oily skin how you know how do you get away with not powdering oh my mm. gosh I, I can't powder but there are different ways to go about it for instance you could do um, a t-zone control um, primer. So that will actively fight that oil glands. Um, so you don't necessarily have to, so I would think most people would think, as I did, that you have to use a lot of powder if you've got oily skin. So That's it. So, and then you end up looking a bit strange. That's it. You end up looking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like um, you've got too much powder. It mm -hmm. gets cakey, it gets dry, it doesn't look fresh, it doesn't look vibrant. That's not what we want for spring, summer. So if you do have oily skin and you want this vibrant glow, you know, start out with T-zone area with a T-zone primer that mm -hmm. will just nip that oil glands in the bud before it, you know, it uh, rears its ugly head at three o'clock usually, isn't it? <laughs> um, so it starts falling off at three, doesn't it? <laughs> three to five. Yeah. Um, so I've I've done one side, and you can see I've I've still got that definition with um, a, just a simple black liner. So this is a day look, but I'm just going to show you because, um, again, uh, people do stem away from the black liner, but it really does just provide that little bit of definition that um, is very subtle, and it, it can be subtle for that day look. So I just really wanted, you know, people to know that I'm, you know, and see me using that black mm. liner, um, and see how subtle it looks on Cynthia. See. Yeah, and, uh, and of course you can always put a bit more on for the evening, can't you? That's you it. You so, can yeah. go crazy with the cat eye eyeliner in the night time. Um, you know, you can put it on the bottom a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some mineralized um, also long wear cream shadow. And this is just in, it's called Pink Bellini, but it's just got that little shimmer. I'm just going to pop that onto the lid close. And I'm just going to let you see what a difference that makes because it just brightens up her eyes just very pretty very subtle almost like it's not there almost just a little bit of a stain mm -hmm. just a soft just beautiful you know little tinge really good. of color yeah, yeah. And a little bit of sparkle but not too it looks much very natural it looks natural mm -hmm. that's it and you know you're you're also wearing um, the cream shadow in a different color and they come but even though they're this pigmented in in there mm -hmm. you know they're not even I want to show just a little bit maybe on my um, hand here you can see just the difference um, on the skin just a little bit of a flick but it's not it's not as pigmented uh, on the lid it just gives that little bit a little bit of something doesn't mm -hmm. it so we've got that and we've got the three-dimensional cheek going and I have to say the theme is creams, creams, creams. When you're going for that dewy finish, 
um, it is about um, having the cream blusher because it does bring that moisture to the mm. cheek and it just seems that you can never get enough moisture. Um, it just makes you look fresh, vibrant. It and feels I'm, really nice as well actually, I was telling Megan earlier, it feels very light, it doesn't, it doesn't feel heavy or cakey or anything on the skin, tight. it's very nice. Yeah. yeah, tight. feels like you haven't got anything on. And to be honest, sometimes, you know, when I am doing my makeup and it, it you know, let's say you haven't drank enough water, um, that sort of thing, you can really see when you put on the powders how drying it is, mm -hmm. you know, just, just this little pop of colour, it's just moisturising and just blending it in. So this is when you can see with creams, you, I could, you could do this on the tube, you know. Um, <laughs> Everyone stares when you do makeup. <laughs> well, let them stare because... <laughs> we <ba> have. <laughs> but basically, they, they're not going to look There's as nothing else to do fresh really. and dewy as you. They're, they're wanting to get that three-dimensional cheek, but they yeah. just don't know how, isn't it? <laughs> so here I've got, I just want to just outline this. I've got two different colors of cream blushers. One for the apple of the cheek and one just for the normal cheek area. So I'm going to use the lighter color of pink, just the baby pink there, um, just an apple. So do, uh, what do we call that? Do I have mm -hmm. lipstick on my teeth? Yeah. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't zoom on me then. All right then, so you can see on the apples of the cheek here, it's a good point that Cynthia is pointing out there is, uh, is the lipstick. Um, because of the, the dark pigment I'm wearing, so that, that's great that that happened here. So you can see how it's just freshly popped. Mm -hmm. Does that not just that looks uh, lovely? You know, look just so she looks t healthy. Did mm -hmm. you take your vitamins today, <laughs> or did you get a three dimensional cheek just going been on? Just for a run. She's got the healthy glow. <laughs> so we're not done yet. So now we've got some um, highlighter, and so this one's uh, a mineralized again mineralized. Mm -hmm. um, the, this is just a nice little highlighter. We're going to pop that on to the highlighting area there. Wow. People are always amazed at what a difference that makes. <laughs> it just seems like nothing's happening and then all of a sudden. <laughs> so how can that make a difference to makeup? Yeah. But it really does, doesn't it? It does. And you know what? You can put it right here, just along there at the under the eyebrow there. And mm -hmm. it really, really, I have to say, this is the best um, thing I find it, when I do my makeup that makes me just feel all together, just, it just, it looks amazing, looks polished, looks finished, looks healthy. And people, it's like, they're looking to see mm -hmm. what did she do with her makeup? Like, why does it, you know, it's very subtle, very natural, but it makes that difference. And it yeah, it really, really does. I, I love the, this um, mineral skin finish. It is brilliant. And um, we were also talking about, obviously, because, you know, different skin tones, mm -hmm. how it, it does happen that some people use the wrong one. Yeah. And it has not a very flattering effect. So you can see if, um, you know, I were doing a darker skin model, I would be using more of that orangey yeah. okay. for that, that top there. And um, also, um, you know, with even deeper skins, a little bit of a warm ready. Mm -hmm. Not if you use this on a skin tone that's darker, it's going to come out ashy. It's not going right. to be flattering. And I think that's, you know, that's the kind of mistake that a lot of, a lot of people make is, mm -hmm. is choosing the wrong colors to highlight. Mm -hmm. um, and it can just go really wrong. I've seen that actually. I've seen some ashen looking faces. Yes, it can TV. go really <laughs> wrong. The contouring can go really wrong. <laughs> this one I have to say, Chrissy, is, is great though, because it's how to wake up your mm -hmm. makeup. And it's the banana powder. And this actually, I've used this on um, mid, mid skin tones as well. So this mm -hmm. is light to mid skin tones. So you can go, um, this banana, it's just a nice little under eye lift here. We'll just put that under, look up. So just dusting it on there, it just lifts And you can see, you can also put it on um, just to highlight. You've got a nice fringe going on, but if she didn't, if she wants to pull back her hair and get a little bit of highlighting, she can pop that, that banana color 
on to you know those highlighting areas. And if you wanted, Christy, to make it a little bit more um, defined, you can put a bit of concealer before you pop this mineral highlight right. on. Okay. And you can, that way, you've got that nice palette. Pop that on there. It's it's great definition to have so get, that. We're going to let before. you finish off just during the break because we need to go to a quick break. And Perfect. then afterwards, Cynthia, you will be showing us some clothing and accessories that we can use too, right? Okay, okay. so do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and still with the lovely Gregoire sisters. So Megan, you're just going to finish off talking about the lipstick and then Cynthia, you're going to tell us about the, the styling. Over to you, Megan. <laughs> Yes, so I put a pop of lip color on Cynthia today and she was um, quite, quite fearful, um, not wanting a lot of pigment and I thought great because I've got uh, you know, uh, a product where you can put um, little clicks of pigment and so I just used one click, put a pop of color on there and um, does the same effect, um, gives you that definition, that freshness, um, that pop of color um, and moisture. And uh, the makeup looks great. Yeah, it really it's does. The, it's the finishing touch. Now, why have you girls both got coats on? Okay. Because it is particularly chilly in here because I do like the aircon on quite high, don't I? But that's not the reason, is it? <laughs> well, we're here, I'm here today to talk about spring, summer 14 styling. And we've started with outerwear. I wanted okay. to start with outerwear. And I think when you think spring, the first thing that comes to my mind is the, an essential the trench coat. Yeah. Exactly. So I've uh, chosen two of my favorites. Um, this one here, I'm dating myself a little bit, but this one's been with me since high school. Oh, but that wow. just, it goes to show that a good <laughs> trench coat um, is a good investment. And it's just so versatile, it's so spring. And um, this one here in a lovely earth green with a little bit of texture and a little bit of pattern in it. Um, you just can't go wrong with a trench coat. Uh -huh. It looks fabulous. Also, I too, love the details of it, it's just amazing. Also, too, I have my sister in a fedora hat, and you're seeing a lot of this right now, and it just really adds mm -hmm. a different dimension to a look, and if you can pull it off, and if you're feeling it, put it the hat going. on. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a bit well fearful then. of wearing hats, because I'm not sure if I'll look a bit silly in them, or, but I, I want, I'd like to experiment one day. <laughs> All right, so. This one's a bit dangerous. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> this hat, is it gonna flatten my Too hair? Perfect. Probably put it on back to the front. Maybe that was really what, good that was what I'm wearing, yeah. perhaps. But. Exactly, and it's all about moving it and just wearing it yeah. the way that you okay. feel comfortable. That's Absolutely. That's cool. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to start with um, my look, first of all. And uh, when I was thinking about what I would do, um, I was thinking everybody has that favorite pair of jeans, mm -hmm. that pair of jeans that they found that just fits them perfectly. You've washed them a hundred times too many. And uh, how can you really spring up or freshen up that look for yeah. spring, summer 14? So what I did is I started with an essential for spring, summer 14, and this is the white basic vest, mm -hmm. or as we say in Canada, the tank top. The tank top. <laughs> the tank top. And basically they come in all shapes, sizes, and fabrics. I've chosen a cotton one that's quite fitted, and mm -hmm. it's quite long actually, but it allows me to do this ruching effect with yeah. it uh, to just add a little bit of texture. What I've also paired it with is a jacket. I love this jacket. I think it's that amazing. a jacket really like can bring a new look to an mm -hmm. outfit. And this is just a little piece that I caught my eye at a vintage sale. And I was really drawn to the floral. Spring and British florals are really mm -hmm. on trend this season. And uh, the beautiful brocade jacquard fabric. And you just want to look for those little details in a jacket that really make it pop out. So like buttons applets, the shoulders, mm -hmm. anything. This one is, is quite unique as well because it's cut short so you can really do yeah, a lot nice. with that. Gorgeous, show them the, the back as well. Yeah, and it's so. Anyhow, um, and then with this outfit, what I really liked about it was that you could do anything with the shoes. So at first I had on ankle boots, I had on knee high boots, I had everything. And then I just chose at the very end, I thought I'm going to do a, a pop of color and wear my Jimmy Choo heels. Mm. Can't go wrong with the open toe, it's spring, yeah. make sure your feet are ready, pedicure. Um, but 
basically that's what we went with. Great. And then it becomes really um, how, we, how you accessorize it. And for me, I just like to keep my accessories simple. I have a few rings, uh, my grandmother's necklace. But what you can do with it is really put um, different accessories with it. So I like mixing fabrics and textures. So I, the movement of this bag is amazing. Nice. It's just a long, you can wear it crossbody as well. But it's just a fringe suede. Uh, purse and when you walk you just you get that movement and it really mixes mm -hmm. the fabrics and, and just adds nice. a lot to the to the outfit and of course it is all about the shades I'm all about the shades <laughs> uh, just you know look in the mirror and see what you're feeling I mean you can change a look just by the shades these are my Yoko Ono mm -hmm. shades I love these <laughs> very Yoko <laughs> they look really good I hear the Beatles I hear the Beatles when I <laughs> okay um, or you can actually take a look that's quite, um, you know, a jacket can be looked at as quite masculine. I was inspired by Yves Saint Laurent movie mm -hmm. that we went to yesterday. So here's my Yves Saint Laurent look. You've got more <laughs> harsh lines and it just makes it a little yeah, bit more yeah. you see that. powerful, I guess yeah, powerful. you could say. So it is all about what you're feeling and if you're really feeling it and you really want to walk down the high street and be noticed. These are so cool. I mean, <laughs> go for the big... I, I love yeah. these. <laughs> you gotta be feeling these ones to wear them, but I think like you're up. in a time warp or something. <laughs> yeah. Where'd she come from? As well. <laughs> okay, but you can entirely change the look of the outfit too. You can go a little yeah. bit more simple, you know, with the per with the purse. Yeah. But don't be afraid to experiment with the color, and you know, spring's all about different colors. Mm -hmm. and, and all both that. look really good with that outfit, mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. bags. Cool. Okay. So on to Megan, what I've put my sister in for today. And with mine was a casual look, we did a bit of an evening look with my sister. And I chose this um, black silk and cotton dress. I chose it for a couple of reasons. This one's adjustable. You can um, adjust the top and adjust the bottom. So you can adjust the length of the skirt to whatever you're feeling like. Uh, don't forget to wear good underwear, Spanx. Uh, if you need to for this kind of look. Um, the oversized cut, especially on the top, is really in right now. And you can really play around with that top and move the skirt and everything. Um, with the oversized cut, don't think that, you know, maybe you have a small and it's still big. It's supposed to be big. Right, okay. And it's, it's supposed to move. Uh, with this, when you, can, when you accessorize, I went for a long pendant because I think you get a beautiful shape here. That's the wrong way. Beautiful shape with the oversized to have a hanging pendant mm, quite low. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing a lot of. Uh, I did a bit of pop of color. I don't like to go all, all black. So I did put this beautiful, again, vintage bracelet that I found. And you don't have to spend a lot, do you, to, to get these no. kind of things? If you just search around, you've That's got right. some great bargains there. That, that bracelet <laughs> was a fiver. Uh, all right. So um, anyways, and then with the shoes, I just went with a very classic, elegant uh, heel in black, again, open toe, make sure your feet are ready for this. <laughs> and you're gonna see a lot of straps mm -hmm. uh, for spring, summer 14. And a strap is really nice if you want to hide, say something like, let's just say a little larger feet or something like that. Are, are you trying to say something <laughs> or? No, not at all. She chose these shoes for me and said. <laughs> the ankle okay, strap okay, is just right. very delicate and it, it, it brings attention to a different part of the foot. So it's watch for that. <laughs> so basically. <laughs> Now you are going to speak about this bag eventually because this is my oh, favorite. Right, right. I don't know if it matches with the outfit, but I love this bag. This is actually going with the outfit. This oh, is cool. what we call the knuckle clutch. Did you see? Did you guys just see that? Do that. Take that off again, Megan. Take it off. Let's do it. Put there it on. Go. And put your finger through. There you go. That's so cool. I love it. Dual purpose. Yeah. Dual purpose. So you basically have a <laughs> ring and you have a clutch, and you know that you'll never lose your purse because you're, it's part of your hand for the night, right? <laughs> so, and people know you can't borrow this ring. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't come off. And again, the shades, gotta, gotta be feeling the shades. And uh, I went with a, uh, a little bit of a 50s look. I'm mm -hmm. seeing like these like tortoise rimmed shades. I'm really in love with these ones. Um, and they look great on her. And they do. Yeah, they really are. I don't know if we've got time to talk about one more jacket that we've got under here. Do we have time, guys? How long? Sorry. 
Oh, we've got one minute. Do you want oh, to do talk we? About oh, this sure. One? Okay. Because I, I love this one. Oh, unfortunately, do you want, maybe do you want to put it on quickly because because of your because yeah. of the mic. I know it doesn't match the outfit, but <laughs> just for them to see the style of it. That's what I meant to say. Is like you know any jacket really brightens up an outfit, and always look for those little details. And in this one, we have like the bow makes it very feminine. Yeah. The little mm -hmm. bit of ruffles. On I the... love this jacket. There's a buckle at the back as well. Exactly. Yeah, it's really lovely. Okay, girls. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Spring, summer 14. Got some really great looks there and hopefully some lovely ideas for our viewers. So we'll see you again next time, okay. girls, all right? Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that is it for today, folks. But if you want more information about the show and also our guests tonight, you can visit the website chrissybshow.tv. And if you'd like to email me with any topic ideas, things that you'd like to see covered on this show, or if you have a question or comment for me, please do email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Bye-bye for now.